Hello, hello! Today we talk about the varnish, the varnish in vinyl making. A lot of secrets are out there about the vinyl varnish, and one thing is for sure um, that because people are talking so much about the varnish, some, maybe even the majority of people, believe that there is the magic varnish which you put on a violin and then your instrument will sound incredible. Doesn't exist, okay? But there are a lot of varnishes which can really kill your sound. Hmm? Or if I say kill, maybe it's better if I say there, is a, there are many varnishes out there which turn your instrument into something different than what you are actually dreaming of, okay? Now, we have two different types. When I came here 35 years ago to Cremona, people were talking a lot about oil and spirit varnish. And here in the Bible Making School, they were teaching only spirit varnish. Main reason actually nowadays that they still continue doing this is not because they don't like the oil varnish, it's just for an institution, a school like the Violin Making School, like here in Italy, uh, it's difficult to cook an oil varnish in the Violin Making School. You know, it's just, it's not only difficult, it's even very dangerous. And I would definitely say don't do it at your house, okay? Um, making, preparing a spirit varnish is actually like cooking, you know, you can do that, everybody can do it wherever you are. So you have already these two different kind of oil varnish which is a little bit more difficult to prepare in spirit, a little bit more easy. Okay, so we have now, here we have oil varnish and spirit. Spirit is nothing else than alcohol. Alcohol you could drink alcohol you can clean surfaces alcohol you can buy in every home depot just calm down take the most exp um, economic one and even if it's a little bit colored red be happy that it's red so you have already a certain point of red already in your varnish so with the spirit varnish you have actually this the alcohol which is a solvent okay this is a solvent, and into that solvent you put resins. On the oil-based varnish, you have actually the base, the, the basic um, ingredient is the oil, which is also the liquid part of your varnish. So you have just oil. We make it green and blue, okay? So you know that this one is already two parts together, okay? Then you also cook this oil together with the resin. These two we cook together, okay? This is a flame. If you don't understand this, this is a fire. Very dangerous on the outside, especially if it's not raining, okay? Um, and you cook them and they make a chemical reaction together, okay? Very important part. And then you have your transparent varnish, which is mostly a little bit brown colored, okay? So the umber varnish is a little bit more brown. Uh, if you take some other resins like copal, it's more transparent and, and so on, okay? So you cook these two together and here you just mix them. Okay, so here you just mix and then from time to time you give a shake, okay? Um, so here is the flame and here we say it's a mix. Once you have that, then you have two things. This one you filter and then you can put some color inside and it's too red, you put a little bit more brown and then all the colors and all the, everything I'm saying right now you, we can talk but just take it as, as one thing here. It's very simple to prepare a spirit varnish and it's very simple to explain it to somebody. 
just say, okay, now put one uh, layer of yellow, and then you go away, and somebody else puts on a, a yellow varnish on the oil varnish, and that's the reason why I put on my master instrument only oil varnish, because first you cook it. Once it is cooked, you leave it in a big jar. Usually, I prefer to leave it at least four to six months, just letting it rest. So all the small things inside settle down. I don't mix it, whatever, I just leave it like this once it is cooked. And then I just take a little bit, put it into smaller jars in order that there's not too much new um, oxygen. And I close it, and then from time to time I take a new small one, which is at the same stage. If I leave it in one big one, and every time the, the polymer, polymer, um, polymerization is going on, density of my varnish becomes always more and more dense, so then I have another problem. So I prefer to make it first one big jar, six months, and then many, many small big jars, uh, small jars, okay? And then I have still to put in the color, and the color is not that now, oh, I found a great pigment or something, and now I prepare my big bottle of oil varnish for the rest of my life, no. Even that one, they all settle down. So every time I'm varnishing, I have to prepare my color. So every time I give a layer, I check if I like it, if it's too red, if it's too brown, if it's a little bit like too orange, more blue, and whatever. Okay? And here it's more like a game, a little bit like an artist in front of your painting. You look at your instrument, and the light is very important, daylight is important. I decide what kind of, of uh, pigments I put inside in order that I get a certain result. Now, I would say that you wouldn't be able to tell the difference of a varnish of one or to another if I am the same person who varnished it. Okay? So there would be people using this kind of varnish and then they get the result which seems to be like a spirit varnish and the opposite. Okay? Uh, it's always very difficult to tell what kind of varnish it is and especially once this oil varnish is applied after 12 years from the chemical point of view it's becoming organic chemistry and it's really difficult to tell what kind of varnish it has been okay if it's spirit or oil based varnish so I would always stay a little bit behind of those who know everything and say ah this one is this and this varnish don't be too secure about it, okay? I want to go into more details of this spirit and oil varnish. I would also love to cook some varnish. I would also love to give you the opportunity to purchase the varnish if you're living maybe in a big town like in New York or uh, let's say uh, Houston, Texas or, or Tokyo. I, I guess it's pretty difficult to get out there into a nice park and uh, cook some oil varnish while for me uh, doing it at my house yes there are my three turtles but uh, they never complain and uh, I just make my varnish and uh, I can see that the windows of my neighbors are being closed because it smells a little bit nasty I don't do it every day you know and then I'm finished after one two hours and that's it and then I'm happy for another few years even, yeah? uh, so if you have this difficulty, I would like to give you the opportunity to, to purchase this varnish as well as this one which I prepare in bigger quantities because I have people working with me, we have different levels of instruments and I think it is good to make also some uh, differences in, in, in the way of making which doesn't mean that this one now doesn't sound well or that this one is now sounding so magic or things like this. For many years I, I thought that the oil-based varnish is actually responsible for the great quality of my instruments and still, I, if I can choose, I prefer the oil varnish. But the big piece of, of the cake is also the wood preparation, which on a spirit-based varnish yeah, you know, you can also prepare your woods. On the oil-based varnish, you have actually uh, another tricky part of the preparation of the wood in order that the oil doesn't soak into the woods. 
Yeah, so you have to a little bit, little bit to imagine that the piece of wood is a little bit like a sponge, and the spirit varnish, if you put it on a sponge, yeah, it would probably soak in a little bit, but while it is soaking in, it's already evaporating because it's such a big um, surface, it dries very quick, especially the first layers, so it doesn't really have the time to go too far inside, right? On the oil-based varnish, it has a lot of time because polymerization is very slow. So by the time you are not even ready with the first layer on the whole instrument, it's soaked in already so much and the flames wouldn't move anymore and it would become really a burnt and boring violin or cello or whatever. So here the, the wood preparation is a big part. I made it from yellow of the egg, or maybe you call it the red of the egg. I don't know, in Italian they say this red part, and for me it's yellow, but whatever. And then I had some other things, then I, for many years, I put it only one layer of a little bit of uh, spirit-based varnish on the wood, and then I varnished with the oil varnish. And since I met Brigitte de Brandmeier, who wrote a very good book about the Stradivari varnish. Um, it's a very nice book, it's very expensive, super explaining it on a very scientific, great way. And since it is so scientific, there is no recipe inside, yeah? because it wouldn't be very scientific if they would give you a recipe. Okay? But if you read it, then actually you, you understand what happened in 1686 which was the magical year, the turning point of the violin varnish, where Guadagnini from Piacenza spread it very Guarnieri, and up to, all the way to uh, Brescia, people definitely changed the varnish process using a, a, a specific wood preparation, which was responsible to change the property of the small pores in order that the, the varnish doesn't soak in. This is a thin layer of protein and nobody knows exactly what it is, but I think I, as, as also Peter Greiner, or yeah, I also like to use it, we even made a, a seminar, two-day seminar in Cremona, and all biomakers were invited, so there is no biomaker who doesn't know about it, but there are a lot of them who were never actually willing to, to put this into their daily practice. Me and a friend of mine, um, we use that wood preparation and I personally have the impression that instruments also sound. Now I just don't want to avoid that you believe that this is now the magic varnish, okay? But still, it has changed something in the sound, especially in the very beginning of every note. Something which have these old masters as well. So. Uh, I believe that this is a very good thing and I put it on my master instrument. So these are the things we are going through. You will um, slowly see what I'm doing. I, I need to cook some varnish since in a few months I need some more varnish and that's why I want to um, cook it at my house and I want you to, to make, take part of it. And uh, I will also prepare some varnish here as you see how I make it. And, 21st century business while I'm making um, how I use this kind of varnish and instruments can sound very well with this one and certainly very well with this one okay and that's what I'm going to tell you and show you okay hope you enjoyed this one see you soon bye bye